Hello, Ranger Point Precision friends and family, and a special howdy to all you Space Cowboys. Today, we're going to be installing our M-Lock handguard on the Smith & Wesson 1854. This M-Lock handguard offers infinitely more M-Lock. You see, we've got a couple slots here on the factory. This one right here, we've got slots at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. We've also got QD sockets for a quick detach sling. There is a threaded boss right here. It's 10-32 for a swivel stud if you choose to install it. But now, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open the action. We are going to visibly and physically check for ammunition. There is not going to be any ammunition on our workbench. We owe that to ourselves and the others that are around us. So, what do we need for tools? Well, tools are very simple. You're going to need a T10 Torx bit. And that T10 Torx bit, it could be a bit like this. It could be a devoted screwdriver. It could be whatever. And then also the rest of the tools that you need are just in the hardware baggie. This is a very simple install. So right here, this is our M-Lock handguard. Now what we're going to do on this handguard is we are going to ensure that this is marked with an S. You see our little S right here. That ensures that this is for the Smith & Wesson 1854 orientation now i've received a great deal of emails from guys and they'll be like well the screw holes don't line up the screw holes don't line up well if you turn it the right way the screw holes will line up we have got the open end which is going to face the muzzle the flanged end is going to face the receiver so now let's go ahead and look at what's in the hardware baggie and ensure that you have everything so here are the contents of our hardware baggie. We've got two Allen keys. We have four set screws. These set screws just go into the handguard and touch off on the side of the barrel to make sure that your installation sets up like concrete and doesn't go anywhere. Then we have these two screws that go through the side of the handguard into the factory tenon. So while I have these screws all laid out, I like to go ahead and get a start and put a little bit of Loctite on each set screw and each screw that way it can go ahead and start drying. In this purpose, I have used purple. You can also use blue Loctite. Please refrain from the red. Okay, step one. Let's take our magazine tube. Well, let's go ahead and remove this. That right there is incredibly simple, no tools. The next thing we're gonna do is take our T10 and we're gonna remove this screw. Now let's flip the gun over and do the exact same for the other side. There goes the factory end cap. Here goes the factory hand guard. We're going to take those and set those to the side for safekeeping. And now, see how simple this is? We're reusing the factory tenon because Smith & Wesson cut this at 400 versus 375 like the other manufacturers. So let's take our handguard, remembering that the open end faces the muzzle and the flanged end faces the receiver. Now this is incredibly simple. Let's just go ahead and line that up there. Then we're going to take our magazine tube. We're going to reinsert the magazine tube. It is going to go through the back of the handguard here. Boom, that locks up. There we go, that lines up. Next things we are going to need, we're going to need one of the screws that goes through the side of the handguard and the matching included Allen key. Now we did already put a little bit of purple Loctite on this so that it'll stay put. Like I said before, blue is optional. So now we've got this hole right here. It's the larger of these two holes. We've already got this lined up with the factory tenon. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and insert that and we're gonna turn clockwise until we just snug it up. We're not putting any final torque on anything yet. So let's go ahead and roll the firearm over and we're gonna do the opposite side here. And it is gonna be the same screw and same Allen key. So let's go ahead and do this. And like I said, we're not doing any final torque right now. We're just getting everything oriented. And at this point, we have got four holes 
for our set screws that come in the package. These four holes right here will house those set screws. And as stated previously, that will make this, this whole assembly lock up like concrete. So now we're gonna need our four little set screws and our Allen key. These have been previously Loctited, which helps with the whole process. So let's go ahead and get this installed. So we're gonna take our first one right here and it's very simple, just righty tighty. And we'll just get those started. Like I said, we're not doing any final torques at this moment. All we're doing is just getting them started here. So there's that one. And now these back ones, these come in at a little bit of an angle. These can be a little tricky, but you'll just put it in there like this and give her a little twist. That one lined right up very simply. Let's roll it over and we're gonna do the opposite side as well. So we've got ours right here. We'll go ahead and put that in. Get that one threaded. And then our next one, like I said, these come in at an angle. So you'll just make sure to get that at that right angle. And just be careful not to cross thread. If you feel it binding, then stop. So that one started and is going right in. So something I want you to look at is the gap right here at the end of the handguard. This is the muzzle end. And I want you to make sure that this is nice and evenly spaced. That way when your set screws go in, you're not cranking it one way or the other. So all we want to do is just minimally torque these just so that they touch off on the barrel and maintain the fact that this is perfectly centered. So boom, that's all the torque we need. As for our rear two set screws, they're simply touching off on the barrel. That's all we need to maintain this alignment here. Let's roll this over. We're gonna get our non-ejection port side screw as well. And boom, not a lot of torque. All it has to do is touch off. Now for our final torque, we're gonna hit both of these screws right here, ejection port side and non-ejection port side. It doesn't take a great deal of torque. We've already applied our Loctite, so all we gotta do is snug that up. That one is snug. We'll roll this one over to this side, give that one a little snug, and boom, there we go. Our handguard is ready for enjoyment. And to complete the conversion, we have got our 1854 buttstock. Now this buttstock has got an accessory panel and a 44 mag ammo quiver on it. We're gonna go ahead and put this on here to complete the conversion. For this, simply all you need is a T20, so a Torx 20 bit. You're gonna take this one simple screw right here out of the upper tang of the rear receiver here. Let's go ahead and remove that, that's a little tight. And then all we have to do is slip on our butt pad or our butt stock here, give her a tap on the butt pad. Let's go ahead and run this down in here. Now this right here just happened very quickly. It is that simple to convert this entire thing into the Space Cowboy rifle you want it to be. Of course, if you need any help, please go to the website. We have got a contact form at the top of the website. And of course, you can hit us up at our support email. We're very responsive to emails and we look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll see you next video. I think I'm gonna go enjoy this 1854.